amigos. <laughs> My task here tonight is a very easy one. All I have to do is tell the truth, and that is to say nice things about a terrific fellow journalist and longtime NESJ icon, Ray Suarez. To many of us, Ray is a role model and a good friend. I have long admired his erudition, his interviewing skills, his writing, and his wit. I remember when I first met Ray in Havana in 1986. At the time, he was a reporter for WMAQ, the NBC station in Chicago. I made it a point to watch his reports, and I was wowed by them. I thought, this guy should be at the network covering national and international news. He has the talent, the skills, the experience. Prior to working at WMAQ, he had been a reporter for CBS Radio in Rome, and he freelanced for several news um, services in London. Unfortunately, the recruiters at the networks, including the one that I work for, miss this opportunity to hire this hugely talented Latino journalist. Perhaps they were selectively colorblind. They could not see the color brown. But their loss was NPR's gain because Ray became a national figure when he took over Talk of the Nation and elevated it to one of NPR's most important discussion programs. And then in 1999, PBS, PBS came calling and Ray was on television at the national level, first as a co-anchor and later as a senior correspondent of the News Hour. His insight and perspective give PBS something the networks and cable seriously lack. Ray is a lifetime member of NASJ, and he has always been there for the association. I forget how many times he has moderated panels, acted as MC, given speeches, mentored students, and contributed to our depleted funds. Gracias, Ray. If you know Ray through, only through his on-air work, you may think of him solely as a serious journalist. The secret is that Ray Suarez has a very wicked sense of humor. So tonight, I'm starting a Facebook page urging Lorne Michaels to let Ray host Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and, and perhaps another page nominating Ray Suarez to be John Stewart's successor as host of The Daily Show. <laughs> but seriously, for all of his professional accomplishments and for all of his contributions to NHJ, Ray Suarez belongs in the Hall of Fame. Sin dudar. Welcome home, Ray. And now I'd like you to see some highlights of Ray's brilliant career. Ray Suarez, a lifetime member of the NAHJ and a founding member of the Chicago chapter, has spent more than 30 years becoming one of the nation's most influential journalists, educating, enlightening, and informing audiences in print, on radio, and in television. A Brooklyn native, Ray started his career in Europe working as a reporter for the Associated Press in London and CBS Radio in Rome, before returning to New York to work for ABC Radio Network. His career then took him to Los Angeles, where he was a correspondent for CNN from the math section of the SAT review book. And Chicago, where for seven years, he reported on international, national, and local stories for NBC affiliate WMAQ. Ray arrived on the national scene to stay in 1993, developing a distinctive voice as the popular host of NPR's Talk of the Nation. After six years there, he was persuaded to return to television as a senior correspondent for the PBS NewsHour, 
In 11 years there, he has traveled the nation and the world, telling the important stories in New York for 9-11. Dangerous fumes and really terrible heat. In China. China has moved from being a society with a fear of periodic famine. Mexico. A program here in Mexico is trying to fight poverty with both approaches. And South Africa. So the mountainous areas of this country are more prone to the disease. And it's Ray also anchors and reports documentaries for broadcast on radio and television, including the nationally broadcast Anatomy of a Pandemic and Jerusalem, the center of the world. His broad interests have led him to write two books, The Holy Vote, The Politics of Faith in America, and The Old Neighborhood, What We Lost in the Great Suburban Migration. He's also contributed to several more, including How I Learned English and What We See. Ray is a graduate of New York University and received a master's in social sciences from the University of Chicago. He spent a career mentoring young journalists, working on behalf of newsroom diversity, and representing the best that journalism has to offer. Betty White, look out. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Cecilia. And thank you, Gloria, for your beautiful remarks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have tried in 35 years in newsrooms to play it straight, to give my bosses what they wanted and what they hired me for, and to give my readers, viewers, and listeners what they deserve. And still, at the end of the day, hold on to myself, still own myself when it was all over. This wonderful award is a nice piece of reassurance that it wasn't some crazy idea or a silly notion. I got my first paying job in a newsroom in 1976 when I became a desk assistant for WNEW AM in New York for $2 an hour, and my duties included the following changing the paper in the wire service machines, changing the ribbons in the newscaster's typewriters, and erasing the tape cartridges that we used for reporter pieces and for sound. The business has changed under our feet. I was so excited about that work. I really thought I was on my way. Back then, I had some notions about what I thought making it would mean, what I thought making it would look like. I wanted to get out of Brooklyn and see the world. I wanted to interview the people who made the world what it was, for better or worse. I wanted to write books and do radio and write magazine articles. And basically, I wanted to be in play. I couldn't have imagined the changes that were coming in our business along the way. The world I became a part of at 19 just doesn't exist anymore. But I have gotten to do a lot of the things I dreamed of back then. At the time, my mother told me that the business didn't look like a sure thing, especially for people like us. So I should probably get a teaching certificate so I could work as a substitute teacher in New York City, just in case. I'm very sorry that she didn't live to see this day, because I know that she would be very proud of me, as I know my father is. In one generation, our family has gone from horrifying poverty in the northwest corner of Puerto Rico to, um, to this. And in, in 1975, 1975, when I was just turned 18, I gave a girl that I knew from high school a piece of paper with the instructions on how to find a college radio station on the FM dial and how to listen to my two and a half minute weekly report on Friday nights. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, more of a joy than I can adequately describe, and I'm pretty good with words, that at 35 years after I gave her the piece of paper, um, she's sitting over there. Um, my wife has helped me 
to live out my dreams of career success. She's made it possible to have a normal life, which, you know, you know how easy it is to live an abnormal life when you're doing this stuff. She's moved seven times, put up with the nights and the weekends and the holidays and tiptoeing around during the day when I was trying to sleep when the sun was up when I was on the overnight shift and raised three great kids with me and one of them is here tonight too. What we do in the various media we work in is hard. And the funny thing is, when people watch it, we work so hard at making it not look so hard that they don't realize how hard it is. <laughs> many of you who work in TV might have had the experience that I've had many times where people come up to you and say, oh, come on, you just stand there with a microphone and you talk and you get paid a lot of money for that? Quite often what I do, if there is the time, is I hand them the microphone and I say, there's the camera, just in your own words, describe what's going on all around us and tell it to the camera. And they hold, they, first of all, they're staring at the microphone in their hand and they're staring at the camera and suddenly they realize it's not so hard. It is, I mean, how hard it really is. <laughs> <laughs> See how emotional I am here? Um, we compete with each other, and at our best, we compete against ignorance as well. We try to make a world that gets more complicated by the day understandable to the people who watch, listen, and read. In career terms, I've been up and down and up again, but I gotta tell you, when I stood in a packed soccer stadium in Durban, South Africa, as it literally exploded with the delirious joy of 80,000 people when Nelson Mandela took the stage before the first free elections in South Africa, when I followed a team of rescue dogs into the rubble underneath the ruins of the World Trade Center. When I frantically ran across Rome looking for a telephone to file minutes after Pope John Paul was shot, or sat quietly at the bedside of a young amputee in a hot hospital tent in Haiti, or with three little girls in Southern Africa, sisters 10 and 12 years old, looking after themselves after both their parents died from AIDS and were buried just 10 feet away. Interviewed princes, chiefs, prime ministers and presidents, prison lifers and gangbangers, farmers and factory workers, and this may be a, a trivial pursuit question someday, uh, did the first national media interview with a young Illinois state senator named Barack something I have remembered again and again and again how lucky and blessed and fulfilled by this work I have been over the years. The tough times in our business are not over, not even close. When the NAHJ gets through its tough time, we're still going to have a monumental task ahead of us a technology-driven dismantling and reassembling that was going to happen anyway has only been made more difficult and more challenging by the economic crisis that happened to come along right with it. We've got to hang in for ourselves, for a country hungry for good reporting, and I want to spend the rest of my career working with you to save our business. I hope I can emulate and be a worthy addition to the list of Hall of Fame members who've come before me. Thank you for the beautiful gift of this award. We are, and you know, we quite frequently forget it, we are very lucky people that we get to do one of the most important jobs in a free society. Thank you very much.